What's up fam, Agent O here with another action figure review. And I was checking my mail today and this popped up. This beautiful bastard showed up in my mailbox. And I've been waiting on this guy for like literally six months because I paid for this thing in January. Just now came out. Uh, I usually don't do unboxings and all that stuff because I think it's kind of dumb. Um, you know, I, I hate that whole like, oh, look what I got. I'm going to flaunt it in your face and you see that you can't have this sort of thing that I'm getting. You know, I hate that shit. So I don't usually do this, but the only reason why I'm showing this, and I don't usually show the box either. The only reason why I'm showing this box is because um, usually whenever you get a third party figure, like a transformer or whatever, they go all out with the box graphics and stuff. And... I like the simplicity of this. There's like literally nothing on it except, you know, Meg's face and the name of, you know, this particular third party figure. That's it. I like that. If that, if, if third parties did this and it cut down on costs of the figure, I would totally be down for that. Like if this, if this cuts off even $10 off of, off of a third party, I totally would be okay with that. So that's the only reason why I'm showing this. You know, because I like the simplicity of it, and it this is all you really need when you when you're you know doing third party figures. Because it's not like the box is going to be worth anything. You know, it's not like the figure is going to be worth made in the box. It's a third party figure. It's not it's not made by an actual like it's not made by like a Hasbro or a Mattel or something like that. You know, it, it it'll go it'll go on it'll go up in price obviously because. It's a fucking third party figure, but it's not going up on price because of uh, the rarity or, you know, the overall awesomeness of the figure. I don't really know how to put it, um, and especially how things are accrue worth. But anyway, this is going on too long. I'm going to unbox this bad boy and we're going to get to the review. All right, and this is Mega Steel One or AKA Megatron out the box. And uh, I am going to start off with the aesthetics of this guy just to get that out the way because, and I really don't have much to say. I mean, I think he is a nice looking bot. He's very, like, he's very solid, very tanky, which because he's a tank, obviously. Uh, goes without saying I do like the obviously the silver uh, metallic paint um, it's not vac metal but that's fine because that's that'd be too much of a good thing all over his body so I think the silver silver goes well especially in his face you can see in his face uh, it actually works to the benefit to have silver paint because you can uh, around his helmet area it's all silver and then it's more of like a just like a, a light gray uh, coloring for the actual face part his eyes are a red um, they're like a red translucent plastic he does have light piping in the back but it's kind of ruined because the screw is like right in the back in that hole and so you're not gonna get a whole lot of light back there, so you're not gonna get the whole light piping, glowy-eyed effect thing going on, which is unfortunate, but you know what? I don't really care one way or another. I'm gonna take the sword out of the way. I'll get to all that stuff in a little bit. But uh, I mean, I have really no gripes. I like the pinstriping, just like in the IDW comics. And I like how they left a little space in the center for a repro label, if you so well choose to use one. Um, you know, you have your choice of having him being, you know, classic old school Decepticon or in the, be, have him be current in the IDW comics and have him be an Autobot. Um, I just, I just like all the placement of everything. Since this is pretty much almost a verbatim copy of what he looks like in the comics, um, they just got a, did a really good job reproducing everything. It, I love the fact that everywhere on his body there's plastic there's no gaps there's no there's no areas where there's just open areas on their legs or on his legs or arms um i i, I friggin love it i i mean i have really nothing to say i mean the detailing is done well enough so that you see like lines and panels 
and uh and and seams on his body it nothing it nothing looks cluttered nothing looks uh it never nothing looks like it's too much it just looks like there's just enough detail all on his body for um without it looking like like it's too much like i've seen some i've seen some third parties where they just do too much with their details of the character and it actually i think hurts it more so than anything else but yeah i mean i've got no complaints whatsoever uh, i do love the backpack storage on his on the tread backpack kibble um for the sword or his like you know his energon mace i'm gonna remove that too for now but uh i mean i don't know i i, I don't have anything to say about this about about the way he looks i think he looks really great my one and only gripe is his head um even though yeah it looks just like megatron and you know i have no problem with that i think that his head is just uh it's a little too boxy and i kind of wish it looked a bit more like on the artwork uh the box art where he's got more of a triangular pyramid headed shape this by no means is bad though this is actually really nice uh I just kind of it's just my own personal preference really it's just a, a nitpick but I mean you can look at this you can get you can look upon his visage and you will know that this is Megatron and uh, you know that's they nailed it so you know without 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 it looking exactly like uh, how he does in the IDW or you know without without basically um, Copyright infringement. You no, know, they got enough off with this care with his face and his appearance overall. So enough about that. I am going to talk about now the articulation. And I mean I think overall for Transformer, he's got really good articulation. Uh his head is on a it's on a ball joint, so you know you can roll it around, you can turn it left and right. Uh, all the way around if you really need to which you kind of actually have to do for the transformation so so he does so he does do a 360 um, because because of the transformation scheme um, I almost I almost wrote this whole toy off because when I first got him out of the package this left shoulder pad was so limp and it just would not stay up. I'd put it up and then I move the arm a little bit and it would fall back down. Put it up, move, fall back down. I was I was so angry that because I paid money for this and and this is their QC. But then you know I started as I played around with the figure a bit more and I started looking around on his body. I noticed that there's a screw there, and I was like, okay, what if I tighten the screw a little bit? and hopefully that will make the shoulder pad stay up and it does and that's one of the things i like that they engineered with this with this particular third party transformer is the fact that you can uh you can tighten or loosen parts of his body um you can he's got screws in his elbows his elbows aren't double jointed but you still get a good that's still pretty good bend on his elbow I'm gonna remove the gun for now because it's kind of in my way but uh it's still there you know you, you and you can tighten it or you can loosen it as you see fit he's got I'm gonna twist his uh thigh swivel he's got he's got uh points in his knees and in the thigh I'm guessing this is for the thigh swivel uh, but you can you can rotate I mean you can uh, let strengthen or you can tighten or loosen those as you see fit righty tighty lefty loosey um, so I really dig that they included the this little I don't know it's not really a feature but this little engineering mechanic in the toy because this really helps to uh, this really helps with posing this figure because this guy is hefty this is a hefty ass figure he's heavy because of you know this is a whole hunk of plastic and it helps that they a lot that they included the screw joints I guess is what, what you can call them I don't know but it's, it's cool that they had that in here so that you can you can tighten or loosen it as you see fit even in his hands because his hands are on a swivel but when you lift up the panel there's a screw like right in there which which will allow you to uh, 
loosen the wrist so that it makes it easier to uh, to put the hands up in the in his forearms for during the transformation which which is one other thing I really like about this figure is the fact that you know once again you don't have any uh, any open spaces and they do the thing that Hasbro used to do where where if the hands folded up into the forearms the panel lifted and you folded the hands in and and then you close the panel I'm not gonna do it right now but you get the idea um, I'm gonna move remove that too I'm just taking off all his stuff because it's kind of in the way um, he does have an upper torso swivel it's kind of more for the transformation, uh, the alt mode, more than it is for um, for the robot mode. But I like that it's there, and you can use it as such. Uh, the tank treads in the back kind of get in the way. Um, they do come out some. If you if you want, you can pull them out a little bit. They actually do come out all the way, but I'm not going to pull them all the way out. But you can pull them out some. You can push them in. You can pull them out so you can get a little bit more range of motion at the torso um but you know he had uh, other than that he has you know your standard your standard articulation on a transformer he's got bend at the elbow he's got bend at the knees knees are on a ratchet and that's about as far as you're gonna get for the bend it's not bad he has ankle rockers um he can't toe he can't point his toe but you know he it does it does go back and forth and from side to side. Um, the toe actually turns in, but that's once again for the transformation. But you know, it's he's got enough articulate. He's got enough that you can pretty you can get a pretty decent wide stance. These uh, side like missile panels or whatever move out of the way, so you can spread his legs even farther if you want. I mean, he's pretty much got a full split. And I love the ratchets. I know some people don't like ratchet joints, but I do. I love ratchet joints and since once again this guy's a big figure he's hefty he needs rat he needs joints that are gonna hold up the weight and gonna hold up poses and he holds poses really well he holds wide stance poses pretty well I mean you could probably if you finagle him good enough you could probably get him to balance on one foot if you really want to but uh I gotta loosen these thigh swivel joints I forgot to mention that he has thigh swivel but yeah, these are really tight and I'm gonna have to loosen them cause that's like too tight. But I mean, I got no complaints so far with this guy whatsoever. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, I, I think for articulation wise for a transformer, he's pretty, he's pretty good. He's pretty on point. Um, I also want to mention that these, these missiles on his, on the top of his shoulder, they rotate like so so you can you can rotate them both for uh vehicle and uh, for, for alt mode and robot mode same thing with the missiles on the sides of his shoulder pads they rotate also they're kind of hard to rotate so i kind of just tend to leave these alone but uh you can't i mean it's there if you want it these guns also rotate because they're in a peg um this one pivots up and down on a swivel this one could if you pull it out some but I just want to leave it just like that and um, because it does it does do the same thing this one does but I just want to leave it all the way in because I don't think it needs to I don't think it needs to pivot and it works this I mean overall this guy looks really great I'm going to transform him not on screen because that takes way too much goddamn time and I feel like that's just padding in a video. So I'm gonna transform this guy off camera and I'm gonna talk about the alt mode a little bit and some uh, some some things about the transformation that you should look out for when you do transform this guy because once again, it's a third party figure. But uh, I'll be right back. So here he is in tank mode. I dig this H tank style. Um, the treads actually pop out and pop this one out all the way but they pop out and lock into place and do the side either. But you can see how one side is out, the other side isn't, but they pop out and lock into place. Forgot to do that. Um, I try not to do transformations on camera just because I think it's a time waster and part of the fun of transforming a transformer is transforming it for yourself. So that's why I don't do it. But overall, the scheme is pretty good. There's a couple hang-ups that I have about it but 
overall I do like the scheme it's it's involved but without being complicated if that makes any sense it's an involved like transformation step like the steps are kind of involved with what you need to do but it's not hard to figure out uh, there's not a whole heap in amount of steps even though the instructions that it came with were really insightful they were pretty uh, they were just visuals just pictures but they showed you exactly what you needed to do and they weren't hard to figure out which was good and you know that's all that the, that came in the box was just the booklet for the instructions and what all the figure is supposed to come with and uh, I dig this uh, H tank mode the one thing I do hate though is you know even though the turret rotates all the way around you know for people who are sticklers with their tanks being able to rotate all the way around I hate the fact that the turret like in order for them to be able to have it like aim up you have this huge gap right here and I mean it could have at least included some kind of plastic that that's on the inside that would kind of trail back so that so that it doesn't look so that the whole piece looks seamless instead of just having this this funky gap I kind of hate that so that's that's one downside that I have with this with this uh with this alt mode but I mean everything else works pretty good you know the guns rotate like I said before um, one other thing I like about this transformation though is that usually one of the things I do myself whenever I'm seeing whenever I see a new transformer toy is before I decide whether I want to buy it or not I wonder how the transformation scheme is gonna be and if I can basically transform this guy in my head I forgot a piece but actually I'm gonna leave it out because I want to talk about something about it but usually when I transform a guy I, if like if I can transform the transformer in my head before I've even laid hands on the figure, then to me that's kind of like a weak transformation scheme. And this one, I could kind of tell where some parts were supposed to go, but I couldn't fully tell where how everything how everything was supposed to fit. And I dug that about this toy. So, you know, once I got it in hand, it all made sense once I transformed it. But uh, you know there's little steps in it like like how these guns in alt mode in the robot mode are in and you can pull them out in the vehicle mode same thing with the tank turret the barrel the barrel pushes in when you're in when you're in arm cannon mode for Megatron but you can pull it out when it's in tank mode and you know I dig that these treads on the rear these uh these actually come out a little bit as you can see you can pull them out some I kind of wish these popped into place though they don't they just kind of float out there and I kind of wish they popped into place like uh, like the like the treads in the front because I have a habit of pushing them in when I'm handling the figure and I don't feel like pulling them back out but one of the things about the transformation scheme that's a little bothersome and you can kind of see it like this whole panel right here it folds down to here around his behind in robot mode and you can see it you can see uh it folds out and then it all kind of unfolds and then it's supposed to peg it's really hard to see back there but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get some light in there but right back there there's a peg hole where where this piece is supposed to plug in my camera's not focusing right because it's focusing on what's closest and not where I want it to focus but it pegs in it's supposed to peg in there and unfortunately it's a really small peg I kinda wish they made the peg bigger um gonna pull this back some maybe that might help a little bit I'll have to get some pictures or something but back there you can see a black hole where this loose piece is and it's supposed to peg into that hole but the peg hole is really small and it's kind of hard to finagle it into into that hole when you need to up oh, I just got it but that it's a little this whole part right here this transforming this whole part and getting it all 
to fit is a little tricky. It's kind of like the uh, Fall of Cybertron Bumblebee toy where where you had a lot of peg holes, you had a lot of slotted peg holes, and you had to get them in just the right spot. And if you and if you didn't, it was kind of a it was kind of difficult to transform them. But once you did get them in the right spot, it the whole figure holds. It held really really well. And this Megatron is kind of the same deal. It's kind of a bitch to get the peg holes in the right spot, but once you do, and once everything fits together, the, the figure, you know, as a tank, it holds up pretty well. And, uh, and you know, I can't knock it for that. It, it, it does it, it, like they engineered this just right. And, you know, it is a third party figure, so it's, it's gonna have a, a much more involved and more intricate transformation. That's kinda what you get with third parties since they're more for the adult collector and less for chit, for little kids. And this is, this does just enough without, the transformation does just enough without it being too complicated, too hard, and too long to transform this guy. It's just the right amount of time, just the right amount of, of uh, steps and uh in the processes it's overall once you get it down it's actually pretty fun and you and it and it can go pretty quickly um but moving on i just want to talk about the accessories he comes with he comes with the sword which is nice translucent plastic i kind of wish that i kind of wish that the sword was uh finished on both sides instead of seeing those gaps so you see those gaps in the on the hilt of the sword and the guard, the handguard. But other than that, I like the way this looks. It's a nice, bright, vibrant red uh, plastic. Pretty nice. His mace, because we all remember in the original cartoon, his mace. Uh, he had an Energon mace, and this is a nice little hunk of translucent plastic right here I dig it I'm kind of it's kind of cool it's cool on the one hand that it's on this metal chain I kind of wish they had just used more translucent plastic since the chain since the chain and the mace itself the mace head itself was uh, all based on energon but that's a little nitpick of mine it's got a handle on it um the handle Boy, why is my shit not focusing? Okay, the handle you can you can hold it, you can have him hold it in his hand, or you have the peg hole on the bottom for when you fold the hand into the forearm, and it peg there's a peg hole for it that way, um, and then this peg right here is for when you have him in robot mode and you want him to, uh, you want it on his back for storage, so three different or a couple different ways well three different ways you can have you can store this thing I dig it on the front where uh, the front of the tank this little piece comes off I had it on Megatron's forearm earlier but uh, it can come off and you can flip the it's kind of hard to flip out but once you do Anyway, it's a gun. I'll show it in pictures, but uh, it flips out and it also forms the front of the tank. So it has two different functions. That's pretty much all he comes with. So yeah, overall, I dig this figure. I'm happy that I've got it in my collection. I, ever since I first saw IDW Megatron, I was hoping that, you know, somebody Hasbro hopefully would have done a third party rendition and they didn't but you know luckily there was a third party company there to kind of fill in the gap and and make up for you know in doing what Hasbro should have been doing I think if Hasbro had made a version of this guy I don't think they would have done a good job because their Voyager class Megatron that they came out with this year was actually pretty decent and if I didn't want this guy more as my rep as my mega as my representative of Megatron and the version where he turns into a tank I would have gotten that version I would have definitely gotten that version instead but had this version not already existed but 
since I already since this guy came out, I I had to have it because this is my you know definitive tank Megatron right here. He looks great and he's gonna look great in your like classics collection. I had him pulls with my figures earlier and um, he looked fantastic. He's kind of like he kind of since he's he, since he towers over the other Autobots. I mean Decepticons and Autobots too. It's cool because he fits right in with the Generations Classics characters, and I do have pictures of him si as, for, as size comparisons with uh, with the Voyager class Springer and with the Deluxe uh, Generations Classics Optimus, and he works. It it looks good. Um, he he looks intimidating, and that's what I like about this figure. It's an intimidating look for Megatron. It comes off like Gangbusters. The you know the uh, the company, the third party company did a really good job on this guy and I'm just overall, I'm just happy with him. He, um, there's another version of Megatron coming out I saw it was available for pre-order where Megatron is actually a triple changer. He transforms into a, uh, the gun, the handgun and the tank. I'm wondering how they're going to pull that off because some of that stuff looks like part swapping and I'm not really keen on part swapping. This guy only has like, this guy only has like two things that need parts swapped and that's his his cannon going from his hand into the turret position and this uh this piece right here which just fits on his forearm when I can get the gun out and serves as like an extra blaster or whatever um but yeah those are the only two things you part swap on this guy everything else is all built on him all built onto the body and I love that those are my favorite transformers you know the ones that I don't have to part swap a whole lot with so that is pretty much it for this guy um, if you don't have it get it and if you really have, if you have a hundred and some odd bucks to spend it's a little over a hundred dollars I think that's pretty good for a third-party transformer of this size of a Voyager class size most other third-party companies would charge you way more than a hundred bucks so I, I think I got a I think I I got my money's worth with this guy. I think I got a little bit more than my money's worth because this is a really nice figure. Um, like I said, he's gonna look good in any of your collections. Definitely gonna look good in your classics collection, which is which is the collection I center on the most um, because I like the sizing of those figures. So that is going to do it because my camera battery is about to die, and I will see you guys on the next review. I am Agent O, and I'm out. Peace.